close-up is brought to you by the Kia Sorento R. Redefining the power of Kia. Yes, good evening to you. You will have heard the news this week that our unemployment rate is at its worst level in 13 years. Doesn't that seem a while back, eh? A different age 13 years ago, back in the days of Y2K, uh, back in the days of Britney Spears or Ricky Martin. Uh, now this, let me show you some numbers. This uh, shows what's been happening with our unemployment since then. It looks pretty good into 2008, when, of course, the GFC, the Global Financial Crisis, hit and the National Party took office. Uh, here are some other numbers for you. In the year to June, redundancy payments topped 39 million dollars and in the last year 20,000 people more people have found themselves unemployed what's also interesting is that full-time employment has dropped almost one percent while part-time employment has increased 1.4 percent uh, that's showing a shift in the country's work pattern so what um, what appears to be happening here what does all this mean if you're looking for work at the moment how has the employment uh, landscape if you like changed in this country how daunting is it for our youth. Massey University's Paul Spoonley has written extensively on employment trends and he leads a program there focused on labour market changes. And he's with us. Good to see you. Good evening. Is it fundamentally different? I mean, is that just a simple more part time, less full time, or, or, or is this just a direct result of the GFC in tight times? No, the GFC has enhanced the trend, but it's been going on since the 1990s. So the, the sort of permanent full time sector has been contracting. And the casual sector, which includes part-time but also contract work, has been growing. Do you see that as good or bad? Um, well, there are a lot of poorly paid jobs with very poor prospects in the casual sector. So a lot of people get trapped there and they, you know, I don't wish to denigrate the call centre, but the call centre is a classic case. So they get employment in the call centre and there's not too many options in terms of promotion or better pay in that sector. Are you trapped in that environment then? Is that part of what's happening in the job environment now? Once you start low, you stay yes, low. Yes, yes you do. And it's particularly true in a downturn, which is what we're seeing with the global financial crisis. So the, the people that enter the employment sector at the moment are going to face what we call scarring. They, they will face long-term negative aspects to their employment. So does this thing go back to the kids leaving school and the word we've had over the years on qualification and you need more qualifications and if you leave into the workforce without qualifications you're basically asking for trouble aren't you? Yes you are and, and, there's, and there's two things I mean most of us are employed in the service sector which requires more qualifications but also employers are expecting more qualifications as a sort of qualification creep. Right. And the degree or the post-secondary qualification is now pretty much essential. So how long are you studying for? This is so depressing. I, le <laughs> I, left, sc I left school at 16 and I was told, I had school cert UE, mm -hmm. you're into the job, you know, yes. away, away you go. That's the only qualification I've got. Now I'm studying until what, I'm 40? Yes, and, and in the 70s, school C, or in, perhaps in the 80s, school C was perfectly OK. But since 2000, we really do see a lot more people requiring post-secondary qualifications. And I think we're heading towards the American system, which is not simply a three-year bachelor's. Because a few years ago, if you got a bachelor's, you got 30% more pay than somebody who didn't have a yeah. bachelor's. And now it's contracted. It's about 5%. So the margin's quite modest, really. See, here's what I've learned about, and I don't want to insult academia at all, no, but no. What, what I've learned is that, is, is that good people are good people. Yes. Whether they've got a piece of paper actually doesn't matter that much. So what you're suggesting is that they're going to have to spend more time in tertiary institutions, mm. and they may be no better than they are now than I was when I was 16 years old with no paper, Yes. and it's the ability to do the job, isn't it? Yes, it is. Um, I don't disagree with you, but what, what I think employers are doing is seeing that uh, post-secondary qualification as a way of sifting out the good workers from from those who might not be so appropriate. And, and, and there's something here that's going on, Mike, and that's there's a great more emphasis on soft skills, mm. on having literacy skills, on being able to communicate, on being um, presenting well, because we're, you know, a lot of us are working in the service economy, as I said before, and having a good work ethic. So I think the post secondary qualifications helps train people and provide those sorts of What I'm skills. seeing is, is also is, is, is a mismatch too. You're seeing in yeah. this country, are you not? You're seeing jobs in one place, people in another. Yes. And you're seeing a, a, a lack of dovetailing, I guess, between what you're training people for and what will eventually be needed down the track. Is that yeah. fair? Yeah, no, it is. And, and we've done uh, repeat surveys with employers. And employers say that people coming out of our uh, training and education institutions aren't actually qualified for the labour market. Now, there's one very significant factor in that is in that young people don't have work experience and that's a major factor and since the beginning of the global financial crisis the under 25 unemployment rates doubled 
and so they're really struggling to get that. Will first that ever change? So, 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 so Greece pays its bills back, Spain sorts itself out, Europe yes. it never, it never happened. In 20 years' time, yes. when my children go out into the workforce, is it the, is it the workforce you've just painted, or will it go back to what we know no. and it'll be it, never the same? No, again? no, no. I think the trend is fairly clear. It's been going on for 20 years. I don't think it's going to reverse. So. Those qualifications, those soft skills, that attitude towards work, all those things are going to be more important, not less important. And I think we're going to see more and more post-secondary training and qualifications required. Appreciate you coming in tonight. Good You're to welcome, see you. Paul Spindley of Massey.